So I've got a terrible idea that I'm super excited to share with you guys. These things are called jump stilts, and basically they're just a piece of footwear you can strap to your lower leg with a big spring on it, a bow-shaped spring that's typically made of carbon fiber or fiberglass, and that spring stores the energy from an impact with the ground, which of course compresses it, and then it can be used to boost the user's next step. Now these things are commercially available and have been for a really long time, but for some reason a ton of people don't know about them. Now the commercially available ones allow a user to jump up to 6 feet off the ground, take 9 foot strides while running, and run up to 20 miles per hour. And who wouldn't want that? But they have a downside. The cheapest pair of adult jump stilts that I could find on Amazon were still $235. And I'm sure it's well worth it, that's probably a good price. But it's a little too high for my liking, so I think I'm going to try to build a set of these. And it's been done before, I've seen other renditions on the internet, but they all have some common problems. The biggest of these problems is the fact that they're too heavy to actually be used as jump stilts in the traditional sense. You can't run fast, you can't jump very high, as a matter of fact you can barely walk. Commercially available ones are about 10 pounds each, and so that's going to be my absolute max in constructing these. Now, the commercially available ones are made out of aluminum, of course, it's lightweight, it's strong. And like I said, these springs are made out of carbon fiber or fiberglass. But I don't have aluminum, I don't have carbon fiber, and I don't have fiberglass. So this entire thing is going to have to be made from steel. Now, as you know, steel is quite a lot heavier than aluminum. And that's going to be problematic. As I said, a lot of the homemade renditions that were also made out of steel had the common issue of being too heavy to be practical. So I'm going to try to get around that issue because while steel is also a lot heavier than aluminum, it's about three times as strong as aluminum, so in theory, I can use a third of it. Now when you buy these, the springs are rated for a certain weight range. There are youth versions and there are adult versions, and typically adult versions are between 155 and 190 pounds. Now my solution to rating this is to simply cut a vehicle leaf spring, which is what I'll be using for the main spring here, in half, and then trimming down as needed until I'm elastic enough to support my own weight. So you can see the design is pretty simple. It's basically just a solid piece that acts as a framework for the whole thing that attaches to your leg. There is no joint here, it's a solid L. You have a way to fasten your foot in securely and all of the straps that I'm going to add on the end product are not in this drawing, so keep that in mind as I go throughout this. This is a work in progress. You've got a solid metal brace up here to keep your leg in place and this is adjustable by these four nuts. And then of course you have the spring going down to here which goes to your contact point to the ground. This is going to need to be some kind of high friction surface because obviously if this slips out from underneath of you, that could be a bad day. And then you've got this here which keeps the relationship between your foot and the spring and you've got three pivot points in total. So overall the concept for these things is very very simple. It's the execution I'm worried about. Here's my plan of action. I'm going to build this frame out of whatever I can find lying around and then skeletonize it as needed to get the weight down to my 10 pound maximum. I'm quite confident that the leaf spring will work well enough for this because I've done some very scientific experiments just to make sure. Okay, so here's a chunk of truck frame. It was left over from a previous project, which is my homemade tank. This is really the functionality of the whole thing. This is the spring. So if you're not familiar with the way leaf springs work, basically it's just a pack of flat pieces of spring steel that are layered from smallest to largest like this. And the one we'll be using is the longest one, which is the one that's mounted to these knuckles up here which works well to our favor, and I'll explain that a little bit later. Now this uppermost spring that we'll be using for these jump stilts is also the connection point from the spring pack to the frame. And the way that works is before these springs were tempered, they were rolled over into a circle, so we won't have to do any welding to mount that onto our hinge at the very top, because the welding could very easily ruin the spring temper on the steel. Okay, the first thing we've got to do is cut this in half. Now this leaf spring is two and a half inches wide, which means we'll be left with slightly under one and a quarter inch wide springs. Now all the dimensions I could find online, which were few and far between, suggested that the user stands about and suggested that the user while wearing the stilts was 18 to 20 inches up off the ground. With that in mind I measured my lower leg and the resulting dimension was a stilt height of 38 inches. So what I'm going to do to accommodate for the slight curve in the spring is measure 40 inches and cut it there so I don't have to split any more leaf spring than I have to because this stuff is a bear to cut through. <laughs> spring is all marked up with soapstone about where we want to cut it 40 inches long right in the middle of this two and a half inch wide piece of steel and next comes the fun part cutting this out now take your time when cutting spring steel because if you have any build up heat that just gets too hot it could ruin the temper of the steel so and I'm going to use a little bit of water on mine just to try to keep the temperature down as much as I can this is going to take a long time to cut and it's going to produce a lot of dust and sparks so please if you're doing a lot of steel cutting remember your personal protective equipment ears respiratory protection eye protection, and a good set of gloves. A half an hour and 
two cutting wheels later, we're finally done. You can see how much spring these things still have left to them. Okay, now that we've got our leaf spring figured out, we're gonna have to figure out something to stand on. So here's my plan. I've got this piece of one inch by one inch square tubing here. I'm going to come off of it with another piece of one inch by one inch and then create a C-shaped cup that should go right around this one and a quarter inch wide leaf spring. And then we can drill holes and just put the bolt all the way through. So I'm gonna get that welded up and show you what that looks like. So this is the uppermost pivot point for our running springs and it's made entirely out of one inch by one inch square tubing and some one and a half inch by one and a half inch square tubing that I cut a C shape out of and then drilled two half inch holes to accept the half inch bolt to hold our blades on here and act as a pivot point. You can see the profile is quite a bit different than the shape I had laid out in the drawing because I was kind of making it up as I went along so I'll kind of explain what I did. So this is just a piece of one inch tubing that originally ran all the way up with another piece of one inch tubing that was cut in an inch long coming out the side and then I cut this off to make it a little bit more ergonomic and a little bit more lag friendly because obviously we don't want any sharp points there and then I took that piece, turned it around and then welded it back onto the bottom here for added support. And because the steel I'm using is repurposed, there's some holes drilled in it in certain places but I don't think this will cause any sort of structural integrity issues. At least I hope not, because you'll notice the support comes down past that, and I don't really see this posing any problems, but I guess there's only one way to find out. Okay, now that we've got this upright done and this pivot point done, next we need a place to stand. So this is what I'll be focusing on next. And I think I'm just going to do that with some more of that one inch by one inch tubing. I think it's about eighth inch walled, so it should be good and strong. I plan on laying a plate up on top of this facing on this plane, so that way your foot has more surface area to stand on. And so I don't really need all of this material down here, so in an effort to try to lighten it up, I'm going to cut this surface out, and I'll probably end up coming up at an angle like this around here and then coming down so I can leave a little bit more material to drill a hole there so I can add this pivot point down here. Okay, and determining where this pivot point is in all of my research, it seems like it's not too terribly important where it's located because it varies so much between designs. So after looking at a lot of pictures on the internet, it seems like about three quarters of the way down this bottom support piece should just about do it. And this is 12 inches long to accommodate my foot, uh, so it's gonna be nine inches from this farthest end. Slight change of plan. I think I can reduce some of the weight if I get rid of this bottom arm here. Almost all, almost, not all, of the commercially available jump stilts I saw when doing my research had this arm. And I'm really not sure of the purpose other than to give a anchor point for this arm here without actually having to drill to and fasten anything to the limb here. Now remember in the commercially available versions, these limbs are made out of fiberglass or carbon fiber. And since I'm using steel, I think I can afford to drill holes in here on second thought so I can get rid of some of this weight from this arm and then I'll just end up having to bolt the foot onto the bottom here. Let me show you what I mean. So I got these made up already. I just used a piece of one and a half inch by eighth inch flat bar and welded a piece of one inch by one inch square tubing that I drilled holes through to act as a hinge for that arm you saw. And then I drilled two three eighths inch holes, one on top, one on bottom that I can use to mount to this limb. Just like that. The next thing I need to do is figure out my distances. The anchor point should be for the pivot point for this arm that goes from the bottom of the foot rest to here. But I can't do that yet because I don't know how much further down this will extend quite yet. So I can't take into consideration this measurement until I get the foot plate built. So that's what we're going to be doing next. <laughs> So I think I have both feet done and I will be adding rubber as a final touch as soon as I'm finished but I think all the metal work is done on them and I'll show you what I did. So here's how I made them. I started off with a piece of 2 inch by 8 inch flat bar and I bent it into this curve and then cut out the shape I wanted which is somewhat of a teardrop shape as you can see it's just mimicking the commercially available feet on the pre-made jump stilts that are out there. After I had that plate figured out I used some of this leftover material from lightening up the bottom of this 1 inch by 1 inch square tubing here and I simply Took the rounded shape, put it against the edge, traced it out, cut it, and then welded it on place as you can see there to give me a nice flat surface to mount this mounting bracket to. And this was made out of one inch by two inch rectangular tubing. Really not a rhyme or reason to the shape, I just left this because I thought it would be nice and strong. Then I welded it all together and this is what I went with. You can see I've got this one mounted here. That's what it'll look like on the final product. I'm using grade A bolts to hold it in place because I don't want to risk this breaking at any point. 
And I think overall it'll be more than strong enough to do the job. Okay, so now that we have the feet mounted on our springs, I have to figure out where to mount these. And these are my attachment points for the arm that runs from here to here that really connects your, your limb with your foot plate. Without it, you would have no control over this. Unfortunately, there really isn't a lot of information to go off of online because I guess a lot of people haven't tried making these. So I'm kind of making this up as I go along and just making it off of pure observations from pictures mostly. So as far as where this is mounted, as far as I can tell, the distance from it to the contact point to the ground and from it to here is the same. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure from the bottom of this up to here, put a crease in the tape measure, bring it over to here, measure that distance, and then just divide it in half. And that's where I'm going to put it. Probably not the best way to do it, but it's the way I'm going to do it because I can't think of anything better. Okay, now to prepare for taking that measurement there, I have to make sure that this is where I want it relative to where my foot's going to be. So up here, my leg will be running down, my foot across, and I want this to be as aligned as I can get it with the center of the bottom of my foot, which will be right about there. So I'm going to go there and that's about where it should be because as this moves, it's going to change the distance between here to here to here. So make sure that's set where you want it first and then you can take your measurement. Okay, so for me, the equidistant point between there and there happened to be at 13 inches. And that's exactly where my pivot point will sit. More drilling and spring steel, yay. Okay, time for a quick progress support. So I've got them all bolted together now with the final hardware. I've got the foot plates here, which are almost done, just lacking the rubber grip surface on the bottom, which I'll definitely get added before I try these out for safety. And then I've got the support arm here. I've got this bolted on, as you can see, but at the bottom of this, it all came together quite nicely, I think. And in order to cross it up, I ended up using a clevis pin up here. It's just a half inch by two inch pin, runs all the way through with the cotter pin to keep it in place. Worked a little bit better than a bolt. So now that we've got the functionality almost complete, we're gonna move on to a way to strap it onto my legs. And so I'm gonna to have to have a support probably somewhere around here to hold my foot on, some kind of strap, as well as a wide plate for my foot to go on so it doesn't roll off the side because obviously I can't stand on something that's only an inch wide. And then I'm gonna have something that goes over my ankle here as a support to keep it in. And then I'll have a bar that runs across here as a uh, solid stop for my shin because I noticed that all of the commercially available models have that. So. I'm guessing it's important. Okay, so now that these are done, I've really only got three major things left to do, and that's the bar, the foot plate there, and then whatever kind of foot plate here. I think I'm gonna do some kind of C channel that my heel can rest in just to keep my, my heel from rolling from side to side, because I think that might be important. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is do what I need to do on this bottom foot plate first. I need to come up with something probably just out on the end here that my toe can rest on that matches the shape of the boot. Cut off there, I don't think it needs to go any further down. And then I'll just work my way down and then back up and I'll keep you guys updated along the process. All right, here's what I come up with for the foot plate. This is what I'm gonna do. This is a piece of truck frame that I had left over from a previous project, uh, the tank. But I think this piece will work perfectly for my needs. So I've got a rough outline. Obviously it's not measured or anything yet, but just to give you guys an idea, I'm gonna cut this out. So this will be my where my toe lies on the end of this. And then this is approximately what the side profile will look like. So I'll have this nice C shape that'll give me a plenty of strength, hopefully. And that slot that you see in the middle there is something that I can use to lace my webbing through to go over my toe. Okay, so these are the foot plates done. And I'm gonna use this opportunity to insert a little bit of advice here from somebody who builds almost entirely from junk parts that they can find. I don't have the skills or the machines that these guys did. They were able to make this complicated shape. We can see the flare out there, then drill the perfect hole. I couldn't ever do that. So I'm taking advantage of their work and doing things like this can really enhance your final product. So keep that in mind and pay attention to things that you think otherwise might be useless. Okay, the toe plate is welded on. Now I'm just putting this guide here to keep my heel from slipping off the side. And I'm going to leave enough distance between here to here so I can leave about a three inch width for a strap to run across here over my ankle. The support itself is just made from one inch by eighth inch flat bar that I cut. I cut to seven inches and that'll leave a four inch wide heel and one and a half inches of support on either side. While putting those on, I've been trying to come up with a way to create this bar that comes across the top that supports my upper leg or goes across my shin right like this. And I think the way I'm going to do it in the lightest, most effective way possible, because this doesn't necessarily need to be over-engineered because it won't be taking all that much weight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some one-by material here. I'm gonna come up in a Y on either side. I'm going to be using this 3 8 inch threaded rod. And what I can do is basically just create a U-bolt. I can drill holes through there and through there through the one-by material. I can bend it in a U-shape, go across there, and then pad the heck out of that. And I think it should be fine, as well as being adjustable back and forth for a different sized user's leg. Just a random tip, if you're going to bend some round stock or some all thread like I am, and you don't have a tubing bender, you can use a pulley clamped in a vise. Now, I keep a drill press pulley around for this purpose because I have different size options, but it works great. You can just clamp it, and then you have a nice channel that you can 
set it into and bend it to whatever rounded shape you want. Okay, so I've got the Ys welded on, leaving about a five and a half inch span across here because I've got small shins. And that leaves a little bit of leeway for uh, the padding. And the way I'll fasten these is by putting two standard hex nuts on both sides of both ones. And then at the back, I'll put a nylon stop nut so I can tighten the two nuts on this side to prevent it from moving. And I'll have the stop nut on the back to prevent it from coming forward at all. So I've got my padding in place. And the first thing I did was I wrapped the all thread in some Gorilla Tape because I didn't want it chewing into the next layer, which is uh, just some pipe insulation. And then I wrapped the whole thing in electrical tape just to give it a little bit more durability. And I opted to go with standard hex nuts on the backs of these instead of the nylock nuts because they're a lot quicker to adjust and I don't have to use tools for it. And I can't foresee them moving enough to come all the way off in usage. So I think they'll be good enough. Okay, we are very close to being done. I think I've got most of the metal working done with the exception of whatever little bits I need to do to get the straps mounted. But I'm gonna show you what I did. So I used some half inch by half inch by eighth inch square tubing and I created these. And these are gonna be the attachment points for the strapping that goes around the ankle, as I discussed earlier, it goes around here. And I created them in a way that they also act as braces. You can see they're not on this piece of one by here, they're on this other piece of technical one by, but this other support down here. And so they'll act as a little bit of a corner brace while not interfering with my heel or with the strap. So these are a two and a quarter inch gap here. So it'll accommodate the two inch seatbelt nylon quite well. As far as for how the straps attach over here, I had a different idea. I can actually lace the strap up through here, around, down, and then bring it around here. And it's a good solid mount that won't move. So I didn't need to cut these slots in the side like I had mentioned before. The next thing I did was I added grip rubber on the bottom of the feet. And to do that was pretty simple. All I did was cut out some bicycle tire tread. I cleaned it off really, really well, got every bit of residue that I could off, and then used goof off to clean the metal, made sure it was completely clean. And then I used JB Weld epoxy just to glue it on. And it was either between that or super glue. And I think both would do an equally well job. Okay, now I'm attaching the straps that go around the ankles. You can see this side is all nice and stitched up with the sewing machine, but unfortunately, the sewing machine wouldn't fit in this area here. And it'd be too cumbersome to try to fit this even close to it. So what I'm doing is I'm just gluing the strap together currently. This is my clamping method. Uh, it works well if you have something that you need to clamp that's quite long. And then after it's glued, then I will uh, put a couple of rivets in here and washers. And that should hold it, I think. So I spoke too soon about being done with the metal work quite yet. So I did some just preliminary testing with what I have working so far. You can see the stealth is upside down here, taken apart, springs down there. It's sitting here so I can have access to this part. And this is the bottom of the foot plate. And I put all my weight on it and I didn't go easy on it. I was doing some testing to get an idea of strength. And unfortunately I was left with a slight bend and curve in just one of the stilts. So my solution to that is just to weld on a piece of one inch by eighth inch flat bar right across here. And that should prevent any sort of motion here. I don't think I'll have any, any worries about this part up here bending. So I just went four inches up from this curve. And of course this is supported obviously by this angle and also this half inch channel and the weld there. So I'm not worried about that, but this, just one quick change. First hiccup I've encountered in the process of making these. So overall, I'd say that this is really not a big deal. Bend now, punk. Just a quick note, and this kind of goes without saying, but when you're tightening down the bolts and all the pivot points on this, make sure you don't snug them all the way down because you still want them to be able to rotate slightly. So make sure when they're tightening them, they're ran all the way down and they don't have any side to side slot, but you can still rotate them by hand. I'm definitely more of a metal worker than I am a tailor. Our sewing machine couldn't fit between this space, and so I couldn't get a sewing machine in there to sew that. And I wasn't about to do it by hand because I'm simply not very good. So what I'm doing instead is I've used Gorilla Glue to glue this strap together, and I've made these plates. They're half inch wide, eighth inch thick, and they have three eighth inch holes in each one, and they were drilled together as a pair so that they line up perfectly. And I'm using pop rivets all the way through to pull that tight, and that is definitely not gonna go anywhere. I'll do this on each strap that needs completed, and that'll be the final step. Okay, so these are the jump stilts, and they're as completed as I'm going to make them. I'll go over the couple of things I added before the last check-in. So I did some tests with them, and I noticed there was a weak spot here and here, and they weren't quite as bouncy as I would have liked. So to compensate for that, I added just a couple of trampoline springs and drilled a small attachment hole in the back of this leaf spring. Now you want this as small as you can get to avoid weakening it, but big enough that two spring ends can securely fit. So I did that on both, and then just hooked them on to where I added that one inch flat bar for support in the bottom, and I've had no concerns. Drops are all complete and dried. Now, as I said, I did do some testing with these where I actually did wear them, and I'll be doing a video of me jumping with them and using them in a minute. 
excuse me. But I can tell you that these straps work quite well and you can feel the need for this bar and this strap in particular when you're wearing these. This strap is to keep your feet from sliding out. This one is to give you control over the whole apparatus with your toe, which is actually surprisingly necessary. And this is to keep it from rocking that way because there'll be a natural tendency because of where the pivot point is located for it to want to fall backwards. And so that's just a solid mount for that. Now I did say earlier in the video that I was going to skeletonize these, but my beginning goal weight was 10 pounds and I'm only about one and a half pounds over that. So when wearing these, I didn't really see a need to try to move, remove any more material and risk weakening it. So I'm kind of forgoing that step. And also uh, I do plan on painting these, but in the interest of time and trying to get this video out for you guys as soon as I can, that'll have to wait. Okay, so just a couple observations. I can definitely see why the ones on the market have a fiberglass or carbon fiber spring system because they're a lot quicker to act. These metal springs, while they work well enough, they're a lot slower, meaning that they take longer to build up the energy and they don't snap back quite as quickly. So what you might consider doing if you were to make a pair of these yourselves is to actually use two leaf springs and then rather than cutting it in half, using each half for each one, might not be a bad idea to use more like two thirds of a full leaf spring for either one or even three quarter. Now I weigh about 180 pounds and I've got a quarter, one and a quarter inch wide spring on each one of these legs, plus the two trampoline springs. So you can see how that affects the deflection of each spring. That information might give you an idea of how wide your springs need to be according to your weight. They definitely feel very secure, that's for sure. There's no way these are coming off my legs anytime soon.